Praise the Lord. Welcome back, saints and seekers of the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope you are having a blessed day in the Lord today. It's morning time where I am, so I was going to begin reading Colossians this morning. I thought I would share it with you. I'll probably read the background in chapter 1 of Colossians. And um, the Apostle Paul was always working through his letters to the churches to keep them lined up. And um, the Lord has spoke to me before alignment and also recalibrate, which recalibrate always makes me think of realigning your uh, sight on a gun so that you have an accurate target that uh, we have to line up again. We we can move away from the Lord in this world little by little. Satan wants to distract us and keep us from relationship with God because relationship is what will keep you and I saved. We've got to have relationship with Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the only way to the Father. So when we call on Jesus' name, believing in the work he did on the cross to free us from sin, that is our salvation. Well, reading Colossians, let's read the background on it and then uh, the word. Since there was no postal service in those days, Paul had to send his letters by special messenger. On this occasion, while he was still imprisoned in Rome, Paul sent Tychicus to deliver three letters, Ephesians, Colossians, and Philemon. So that's three books in the New Testament. They are the letters of Paul. And to escort a runaway slave back to his master in Colossae. Now, I know we all frown on slavery, etc., but this is just what was going on in those times. <clears throat> and um, Paul instructed people, whether you're free or slave, we're serving Jesus Christ, and we're honoring all men uh, and doing, we're, we are serving all men. As Christians, we are servants to all. Paul addressed certain problems in the church at Colossae, in particular some false philosophy being taught there. Later, these teachings would be known as Gnosticism. In general, Gnosticism was the belief that matter is evil and spirit is good, the body being a prison for the soul. Philosophers who tried to combine this belief with Christianity insisted that Jesus could not have had a human body since bodies are evil and therefore could not have been crucified. Paul countered this teaching by affirming that God in all his fullness dwelt in the body of Jesus and that it was his death in the body that reconciles us to God. Christians must therefore demonstrate their faith in Christ in their own bodies, that is, avoid asceticism and legalism. Instead, Christians must put to death the sinful deeds of the flesh and bring to life the spiritual virtues of faith. Chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace be unto you in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit as it doth also in you since the day ye heard of it and knew the grace of God in truth. So they, as well as us, when we heard the gospel, and we believed when faith was mixed with the hearing of the gospel, we began to change. We began to bring forth fruit to honor the Lord, laying down sinful practices and deeds and picking up good and fruitful things to honor the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father for all they did for us. Verse 7, as ye also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, 
who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. You know, as we're reading the word, we can pray the word. So when we get a, a scripture like that, here's what Paul prayed for people. So let's pray that for us, Father. We ask that we might be filled with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding and that we might walk worthy of the Lord. Praise God. Verse 10, that we might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. Uh, when you received the Lord Jesus Christ and had belief in him, this was a mighty transfer. You were delivered from the power of darkness, and you were translated into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Verse 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. I always uh, feel like that scripture is so important, that he might have the preeminence. God is above all, he's in all, he's through all, and all glory belongs to God. He has the preeminence in all things. Verse 19, For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, and you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. So what an act of mercy on God's part to make this salvation available to us, to call to us where we could turn. You know, when you're bound by the enemy, you can do nothing. You just can't get there. It takes the Spirit of the Lord to do this turning in us that breaks us free of all those bonds of wickedness. We need help, and we need to call on the Lord for that help. Verse 22, in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Praise God. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, Notice the if word. We just think we can do anything sometimes and just casually lay it off. Well, Jesus covered all that. But we've got to pay attention to the if words. Where How are we kept holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight if ye continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. So what's the body of Christ? The church. Every born-again believer is the body of Christ. He's the head of the church. The head is where the brain is, right? The brain tells the body what to do. 
So we are directed by Jesus Christ. He's our head. He's our authority. Verse 25, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. Who Jesus is, there's the mystery. He's all through the Bible. They've got uh, even a song about Jesus all through the Bible, starting at Genesis and moving through. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's all in him. Praise God. Verse 27, To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. We have this wonderful thing that happened when um, Jesus began his church. You're able to come to Christ, and Jesus will come live in you. You're able to be baptized with the Holy Ghost, to have power to walk out this life. Praise God. Verse 28, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. Praise God. God was working mightily in the Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul learned what he learned through the Holy Ghost and through being in the presence of Jesus Christ. Praise God. He had that third heaven experience and uh, seeing all that glory, all that would one day be our full inheritance. He was able to suffer the things he suffered. He's, he suffered a lot to get this word out. And angels and the Lord strengthened him to do what he did. And angels and the Lord will minister to you. You have ministering angels. They care about you. If you belong to Jesus Christ, he's got a hedge of protection around you. Unless, as in Job, he takes a time to pull it down a little for a testing time for you. And we don't want to fail those tests when they come. God is with us. God is faithful. He will be with us till the end. So we are required to patiently endure to make sure we are doing works meet for repentance and that we do not grow weary in well-doing. So, you know, do some intentional, purposeful planning in your day but also be ready for those divine appointments that the Lord makes for us to do good to others and to share this gospel. I love you. Jesus loves you more. Be blessed. Acts 2.38 if you need to give your heart to the Lord.